What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and the Bungie weekly update has just been released, and usually that means we have some grand spanking new Destiny news to go over. However, today, while we still do have some new Destiny news that we will go over, the Bungie Weekly Update was more so to just reiterate all of the news that has come out in the past few weeks. So I thought I would do the same. There has been a ton of different news coming out at a ton of different times about what is happening with Destiny and even Destiny 2. So at the beginning of this video, I'm going to mainly just re-explain all of that news. For all of you guys out there who maybe have missed the stream, missed certain videos, missed certain updates, this video will get you completely caught up with everything we know to date. Now, if you are someone who watches my videos all the time or is keeping up to date, I'll put a time right now on screen that you can skip to to just get to the completely new stuff that came out today. And as usual guys, if you enjoy this content and enjoy being kept up to date with the latest Destiny news, please remember to support the video by liking, commenting, and especially sharing. It's a very simple thing to do, but it really does help me out. So let's get started. Now all of the recent Destiny hubbub really came from an older Bungie weekly update. In this weekly update, Deej announced that the next day there was going to be an announcement, Classic Bungie, for the next content offering, Hitting Destiny. The next day happened and it was revealed that the next live event, the next free live event, somewhat akin to the April update or the dawning, was going to be called the Age of Triumph. And the schedule for revealing what was exactly in the Age of Triumph was laid out. Three Wednesdays in a row, Bungie is going to stream on their official Twitch channel and give us more information about the Age of Triumph. The first Wednesday was going to be kind of the big reveal, the baseline for what we can expect in the Age of Triumph. The following Wednesday would deal with how weekly activities are changing in Destiny with the Age of Triumph. And the last Wednesday would detail the sandbox and loot changes coming to Destiny with this live event. During this same announcement, they also talked for the first time officially about Destiny 2 and how character transfers would work in the game. Bungie said that your progression, power, and loot essentially, including your cosmetic items and all Eververse items and currency, would not carry forward. Really the only things that are carrying forward is your Guardian's appearance. That obviously created some pretty big talking points and somewhat of a division within the community, but we're not going to get into that today. This is covering baseline news. Now, after that announcement, there was, of course, a lot of speculation leading up to the first stream. Mainly, there was a lot of clues that the raids, at least the Vault of Glass, would be getting remade for the Age of Triumph. The picture announcing this stream showed off a Minotaur standing in front of the entrance to the Vault of Glass, all four raids are present in the sigil for the Age of Triumph, etc. Well, we actually got that first big official live stream recently, and during it, these things were revealed. Firstly, all three older raids, the Vault of Glass, Crota's End, and King's Fall, are getting their light level increased so that their hard modes reach 390 light, which matches the Wrath of the Machines hard mode. Their loot tables are also being updated in some fashion. We don't know exactly whether or not, you know, elemental primaries are coming back. That's going to be revealed on March 22nd with the last live stream detailing loot and sandbox changes. However, again, their loot tables are being updated in some fashion and they're going to be dropping at up to 400 light. And by the way, that 400 light level is not going to change with the introduction of the Age of Triumph. It's going to remain the max light level. Now additionally, pertaining to raids, it was also confirmed during this stream that the exotic raid weapons, specifically the Vex Mythoclast, and by proxy and assumption, the Necrochasm, were being updated and being made infusible into the new light level system. Additionally, it was stated that the older raids are getting some changes to their mechanics, 
exploits especially are being addressed so the new updated versions will play a little bit differently than the older versions. It was also revealed that with the launch of the Age of Triumph, there's going to now be a weekly featured raid. This weekly raid activity is going to feature all of the challenge modes being active. And by the way, challenge modes have been added to the two older raids that didn't have them, Vault of Glass and Crota's End. And additionally, completing the weekly featured raid is going to award you with special items. The one item that was revealed is Age of Triumph ornaments. These are going to be placed on new armor sets that are being made for all of the different raids to accommodate these ornaments. Now along with all of this raid information, we also got to take a look at the Age of Triumph record book. This is going to be the biggest record book ever made for Destiny, and it details your accomplishments throughout the entirety of the game's history. For example, there is an entire page dedicated to how long you were playing the game for. If you've been playing between the release of the game to the Dark Below expansion, you get one of those nodes completed. You get another one from the Dark Below to House of Wolves, and etc. Now, you don't actually need to complete 100% of the Age of Triumph record book to get all of the rewards. By the way, the rewards are going to be a bunch of emblems, and then lastly, a discount code for a t-shirt on the Bungie store. Similar to the reward for the Moments of Triumph Year 2. This record book really does contain everything. There's a page for each class, there's a page for Crucible, Trials of Osiris, collecting even. And every time you complete a node, some pages will have you just get an entire emblem for completing that node. Other pages have you get a special emblem for completing every node on that page, etc. It's going to be a lot of things to do for the completionist within any Destiny fan. The Age of Triumph will officially release on March 28th, and it will be the last content edition to the original Destiny. The next big thing we can expect after the Age of Triumph is quite literally Destiny 2. And so with that, you should be caught up to date with all of the latest Destiny information up to this point. Again, next week is going to be Bungie's next live stream, Wednesday, 10 a.m. Pacific time on their Twitch channel, talking about weekly activities. We don't really know anything more other than the fact that there is going to be the Prison of Elders making some sort of return. We know this from its symbol being present in the announcement picture. Now we also know from Bungie stating this on stream and actually reiterating this today during the Bungie weekly update that nightfalls are being impacted in some way. They had a bullet point that said, quote, what was that about adding some mayhem to the nightfall? So it looks like nightfalls are getting more dangerous, more challenging, or more interesting nonetheless. Now also, today, Bungie had an FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, about the Age of Triumph. There's three that we're going to go over. Firstly, they talk about the question, will I receive credit on the commemorations page of the Age of Triumph record book, which is the page that details how long you've been playing the game shown here, for participating in the previous Destiny releases if I've deleted a character. This was actually a comment that came up quite a bit on my video on this information. The answer that Bungie states is, yes, but only on that same account. The commemorations page of the record book will be the only page that references account data. All other Triumph nodes within this record book will be character based. As such, progress will be lost if it was previously made on a character that you've deleted prior to downloading update 2.6.0, which will of course include the Age of Triumph. The next big question is, will I receive credit for participating in previous Destiny releases if I've upgraded from a legacy console, so if you've upgraded from the Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 3, will you receive credit? Now Bungie's answer to this is yes, but only if you've successfully completed the account import process at the time of upgrade. 
In that case, players who have migrated from a legacy console to a console within the same family will receive credit for participation in previous Destiny releases on the new platform. Please note the following, account data from legacy consoles will only be reflected within the same family. So that's of course upgrading from the PlayStation 3 to the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox 360 to the Xbox One. If you were playing in the Xbox 360 and got a PlayStation 4, your account didn't properly transfer and therefore you won't receive these rewards unfortunately. Now the last and dare I say most important question in the FAQ is, will there be any increase to vault space. Bungie's answer to this is no. The following collections added in previous Destiny updates were the final storage solutions implemented for Destiny 1. And then they go off to list exotic weapons, exotic armor, ships, shaders, emblems, emotes, holiday items, and abandoned quests. So they're basically saying we have added certain things to curb the need for more storage, so we're not adding any more vault space. This to me is definitely, definitely unfortunate. Now, of course, since they are updating a bunch of stuff, you can delete more stuff now, I guess. You can delete Vault of Glass stuff that you may have been holding on to because there's going to be finally new Vault of Glass stuff, I suppose. But again, this is rather unfortunate. Not increasing Vault Space is going to hurt collectors within Destiny, especially if they're not bringing forward older Year 1 weapons. A lot of Year 1 weapons are still in the game, but there's no way to acquire them. And so deleting them will see them you know, disappear forever. And therefore, I am a little disappointed by this because increasing vault space, although you always do get people saying, my vault space is fine, why is everyone complaining? Increasing vault space hurts no one and helps a lot of people out. It is unfortunate that they couldn't put enough resources into expanding it for one last time before Destiny 2. So this was previously a gray area because they didn't talk about it, but here's the answer. Next up, we have the information about the next Bungie Bounties, and yes, that's Bounties with an S, because there are two. Both are from the region of Brazil. The first one is against Game Player J at 11am Pacific Time on March 10th on, unfortunately, the PlayStation 4. The playlist is Clash. Now, I say unfortunately because I've been covering this for the past several Bungie Weekly updates and I've never seen Xbox One. And the news gets even worse if you're an Xbox player because the Bungie bounty after that is BRKSEDU, Region Brazil again, of course, 4 p.m. Pacific time on March 15th, PlayStation 4 again, with the playlist again being Clash. Now, of course, that's great if you're on the PlayStation 4. With the region of Brazil, you have two great chances to get Bungie bounties with these two content creators. But again, unfortunate that Xbox players are being so incredibly left out with these Bungie bounties. I really hope Bungie actually goes out of their way to make the next Bungie bounty attainable for Xbox players. And so guys, that is it for all of the Destiny news of the past few weeks. Bungie is going to be at PAX East, however they've stated that outright they aren't hosting a panel. Nothing Destiny related should be revealed at PAX East, they're simply there to meet and greet the community. Guys, again, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. Now, if you did, please remember to help me out by rating and especially sharing this video. If you want to see more Destiny content similar to this and don't want to miss out on any Destiny news, be sure to slap that subscribe button. And if you actually want to be notified of new uploads, make sure to press the bell beside subscribe. Now, if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity the best way is to follow me on twitter at rick Kakis. that's linked in the description down below as is my twitch channel which you can also follow again i hope you enjoyed the video and as always have a good day